Giants and their ancestors have ruled the seas for over 400 million years, but fast forward to today and some of these incredible animals are right on the brink of extinction. We hear about lots of shark species that are endangered or perhaps even critically endangered, but today we're going to have a look at the shark species that aren't just in danger, these ones are literally about to disappear forever. The question is, why are these sharks different from the rest? What's caused them to dwindle in their numbers so much that they're essentially already gone? So today we'll have a look at whether all hope for these ancient fish is lost or whether there's something we can do to help them. Here are four shark species species that could be very much on the edge of extinction. At first then we've got a small shark species occupying a tiny slither of coastline in the southeastern Pacific Ocean. This shark is the sharp fin hound shark. The sharp fin hound shark is a small shark species often reaching sizes of about a meter that's only known from the Manabi province of Ecuador in South America. The area that it's thought to possibly exist in is only around 5,000 square kilometers which when you think about the range of a shark species is actually quite small. This shark species is only known from two specimens a male and a female and it was last seen in 1960 nearly 65 years ago. Its preferred habitat is coastal inshore waters of around 50 to 200 meters deep and it likely feeds on small crustacean species. Although so little is known about this shark, we can't be entirely sure of its diet. In recent years though, after extensive interviews and investigation, locals have reportedly captured the shark on a few occasions in different parts of Ecuador. Specifically, that was Las Piñas in the 1990s, the early 2000s for Liguiki, and then somewhere between 2010 and 2015 for Santa Rosa. You can see then over the last 30 years or so, the apparent sightings of this shark species are clustered right on this tip of the Manabi province, which shows you just how scarce it is across its proposed range. There's of course no scientific evidence for these reports, so they'll remain unverified because the locals didn't realise how rare a shark it was they'd caught. But the fact that there's still very rare reports of it kicking around gives us some hope that this species is still living off the coast of Ecuador. There's also some promising evidence that it might actually inhabit the protected waters of Machalila National Park, an area of over 750 square kilometres where fishing practices are heavily restricted. And if it does reside in the park, it would at least have some place of refuge from the artisanal and industrial fisheries that it might be at risk from. Efforts are continuing from scientists and researchers to find some more conclusive evidence for the shark fin hound shark, particularly from shark scientist and author Dr. Dave Ebert. You might know of Dave from his very popular book, Sharks of the World, A Complete Guide. And Dave, along with a team of other scientists, have been actively looking for the shark fin hound shark, conducting interviews with locals, handing out posters, and checking fish markets. He even has a YouTube series all about lost sharks, with one video specifically about the shark fin so I'll make sure to post that link in the description for you all to check out please go and send him some shark bites love he is an awesome dude anyway there's still a little bit of hope for this shark species despite it not being seen in such a long time the IUCN red list which is the leading authority on population stocks for species around the world has estimates that there are perhaps less than 2,500 individuals left in the wild bearing in mind there that that report was updated from its 2009 assessment back in 2020 so I'd imagine their numbers might have declined even more since then as well it's really good to hear though that there's some active work being done on this shark species so fingers crossed that Dave and his team can get the sighting they're looking for soon. Okay our next shark then probably has one of the coolest names that I've come across for a shark species before but it is well and truly missing. This shark is the crying Isaac cat shark. This quirky cat shark is a small deep water shark often reaching maximum lengths of 40 centimeters that lives off the continental slope of Tanzania and Kenya. It mainly lives in waters that are about 600 meters deep and other than that we barely know anything about it. It's so rare there's not even a published photo or drawing that I can find to show you guys. This one here is a white spotted Isaac cat shark to give you a bit of an idea of the shape although our lost shark in this case almost definitely had some kind of dark line running down from the eye towards the snout hence the common name Crying Isaac. The information that we have about this shark comes from just four specimens, a couple caught off Pember Island in Tanzania, and then another couple off Southern Kenya. Unfortunately though, the last of those specimens was caught back in 1939, so it is definitely a lost shark species, because what, we haven't seen it in over 85 years? Although, the Crying Isaac has one factor massively playing into its favor that might actually mean it's not close to extinction at all. Because of the depths that it lives, it's unlikely that it's heavily impacted by fisheries in the region, simply because there are no Tanzanian, Kenyan, or any other fisheries operating at those depths. Most fisheries here are working at depths of less than 200 meters, so the crying Isaac might have a place of refuge down there, safe from being caught in the nets and killed as bycatch. Perhaps one of the reasons why we've not seen it since 1939 is simply because no one's dropping nets down to 600 meters off the coast of these countries, and it's just not being caught. And so because of that big factor, the IUCN Red List has it in the least concern category, despite there being no records of the shark for a very long time. I think it's more likely that this one's maybe a data deficient shark, and the only 
only way we're going to find it, if it is still around, is if we do some deep sea trawls off those countries or maybe drop some deep sea bruvs. Now that would be a really cool little scientific research project there. But for the time being, the crying eyes at Cat Shark remains relatively undetermined with its population number unknown. Deep water trawls have been taking place off these countries for the last 15 years or so, so if one crops up, we'll have a much better understanding of where this species is at. Up next then we've got a shark species that has proved pretty controversial over the last few years. This shark is the Pondicherry shark. This small cochranid shark, rarely reaching lengths of longer than a metre, has a possible patchy distribution in the Indo-West Pacific, most notably around China, India and Indonesia. They're thought to live mostly in inshore coastal waters, feeding on small bony fish, cephalopods and small crustaceans. Some older records out there suggest that they might occasionally inhabit river systems, although this is hotly debated in the scientific community. And because of those debatable reports, it regularly leads to confusion with other shark species that enter river systems, for example, juvenile bull sharks. Now, according to the IUCN Red List, the Pondicherry shark hasn't been seen since 1960. This is a change from their earlier report that had said the last one was seen in 1979. And so the newer IUCN report discounts that 1979 sighting, stating that only 20 museum specimens exist of the species, all of which were collected before 1960. Sparse reports then from 1979, the 1990s and 2000s do exist, but none of those reports could be independently verified. The most recent claims of its continued existence came in 2007, 2014 and 2016, although the 2007 and 2016 reports again couldn't be verified. The 2014 report from the Menic River in Sri Lanka came with two photographs to support the claim by De Silva, although after review from several other leading specialists, the fin coloration, snout length and second dorsal fin height immediately ruled out the Pondicherry shark and it was deemed to instead be a juvenile bull shark. After these alleged Sri Lankan sightings, there were further claims of a rediscovery by TV personality Forrest Galante in his series Extinct or Alive on the Discovery Channel in 2019. To be fair, he attributes the rediscovery of the Pondicherry shark to his wife Jessica instead of himself, although the whole thing was drenched in controversy. Local scientists claim that Galante had swooped in after those 2016 and 2017 reports with a TV crew to steal the limelight from resident Sri Lankan zoologists and snatch the apparent rediscovery for himself and his wife, which again isn't the first time he's done this. There's also the suggestion that the sharks they're holding in these pictures here aren't Pondicherry sharks, but could either be spot tail sharks or even juvenile bull sharks who are both found in the waters of Sri Lanka. Finally, and I'd perhaps say the most telling in all of this controversy is that there were claims made by Galanti and his wife that these exact specimens that you can see here were genetically tested and it was proved that they were Pondicherry sharks. But to date, there remains zero evidence of this apparent genetic testing and nothing has been published in the scientific literature from Galanti, his wife, or any of the other team that went on the expedition to prove it. Considering that was nearly six years ago now, I'd say they either never did the genetic testing in the first place or the scientific methods they used to do the genetic testing were so unreliable that they couldn't be published in the literature. Again, I've got my own thoughts here, but I'll let you guys make your own mind up on that one. So at least according to known science, the Pondicherry shark hasn't been seen now since before the 1960s. The habitat in which it lives, which was inshore coastal waters, has been extensively fished and it likely would not have been able to refuge anywhere else across its range. Sadly, the Pondicherry shark would have been caught in all sorts of fisheries, all the way from subsistence ones by locals up to industrial ones with large gill and trawl nets. Using the best predictive models, it's thought there are less than 250 mature individuals across its entire range and the species is listed as critically endangered with one of the highest extinction risks for all sharks. I think the best way we're going to prove this shark's continued existence is from genetic analysis, most likely from specimens caught in fisheries, which is all the more important those local scientists in those countries have the tools available to them to efficiently and reliably collect those genetic samples and then send them off for independent verification. Okay, up next then we've got a shark with a name befitting of its current population status in the oceans, with scientists sadly describing this one as being lost before it was found. Of course then, we've got the lost shark. This small carcaranid species, once native to the waters near Borneo, Vietnam and Cambodia, is one of, if not the rarest shark species in the world. The fact that it's got the genus species name, Carcarhinus obsoletus, tells you, I think, all you need to know. Obsoletus. Like the Pondicherry shark, it was thought to inhabit shallow inshore coastal waters of around 50 meters deep, feeding on small fish species and crustaceans. The lost shark was only formally recognized as its own species in 2019, long after the last sightings were recorded. How long ago were those sightings, you ask? Oh yeah, 85 years ago, all the way back in 1934 in Vietnam. The species is only known from three specimens ever collected, so it gives you an idea of just how rare it is. In its official report, the IUCN Red List gives three lines of reasoning why it might be extinct. So for this extinct classification, they give the only three specimens 
Germans ever recorded reason, the last of which was 1934. They also describe how it was likely heavily fished across all of its range for the past 100 years and even more extensively fished since the 1960s. And lastly, despite there being significant effort to record and identify the species, there haven't even been any local reports or unconfirmed sightings in over 50 years. Although within that report, they also provide some reasons as to why it might just still be out there somewhere. And for those reasons, they state that the lost shark doesn't actually have any ecological specialization that might predispose it to extinction. For example, it doesn't live in just one tiny habitat in a single country of the world feeding on a really rare type of crab. It's a bit more generalist than that, which might help it out a bit. And they also say because it's very similar to other carcharonid species, it might have gone unnoticed in large catches of similar looking sharks and we've just missed it. Again though, it's those inshore fisheries that have completely decimated this shark species. The South China Sea, even over a hundred years ago, was just absolutely bombarded with fisheries that the lost shark just had nowhere it could escape to. That paired with the fact that it likely had incredibly low productivity, only producing a few pups and only giving birth every other year, meant it just couldn't reproduce quickly enough to keep up with the amount that it was being fished. Now, despite the shark almost certainly being extinct, the Red List actually places some conservative estimates that there may be under 50 individuals left in the wild. Although 50 is just so, so low, even if there were, I'd say there wouldn't be anywhere near enough to survive and regrow that population, unfortunately. For now, I'd say of all the sharks we've had on this list so far, the lost shark definitely keeps up with its namesake and unfortunately is very likely extinct. I think if you have a look at all the sharks that we've featured on this list so far, there seems to be a common theme appearing across most of them, which is they're all small shark species, around about a meter in length, that live or lived in inshore coastal habitats, which coincidentally are areas that have historically been and still are being extensively fished. And I'd say it's all the more important that we try and push for fisheries to be as sustainable as possible while still allowing local populations to keep their livelihoods. It's an insanely tricky balance that fisheries shark scientists have been trying to solve for years. Tighter regulations, more enforcement and careful spatial planning of marine no-take zones are some of the only things that are going to stop more shark species ending up on the list that we've had today. And I've only just scratched the surface of these shark species that are on the brink. There's so many more that could have featured. Sharks that were thought to have been gone for years and years only for a couple of them to just pop up in some random fish market. So if you want to hear more about these near extinct shark species, make sure you let me know in the comments. I know it's kind of a sad topic to talk about because we're likely never going to see some of these shark species again, but I do think it's really important to talk about it because we can then try and stop it happening to more shark species. But for now, if you're after some more information on sharks and some of the threats that they're facing around the world, you might like this video here. In it, I break down some of the biggest threats to sharks and spoiler alert, shark finning isn't one of them. Don't believe me? Go and check it out here.